What's up everyone and welcome back to the comps channel. We're approaching the end of this getting started with Meshtastic series. All that's left is this video and one more where I'll close out the series with a video on frequently asked questions and answers to them. So at this point in the series, we've picked out a device, a good antenna for it, and maybe we're even using a sensor on the whiz block. All that's left now is to go over the flashing process on ESP32 devices like T-beams or this T-deck here. Then after that, we'll go over the basic configuration process to get all of the devices communicating together. And we'll go through the Meshtastic app interface to show you how to use it. So join me as we dig into it. We're approaching a restricted area. Restricted area is one mile west. As mentioned in the devices video, in the world of Meshtastic, there are two types of devices, ESP32 based and NRF52 based. There's actually another type of device that's emerged for Raspberry Pi and support for using Meshtastic on Linux is in development as well. I'm a big fan of Linux and the Raspberry Pi, so this is something I'm very excited about and can't wait to try out. I just got one of these wave share devices and I'm sure we'll get into running Meshtastic on Linux when we dig into the advanced Meshtastic series. For now though, we're just worried about the ESP32 and NRF52 based devices. If you have a whiz block and followed along in the last video, your device is already flashed and ready to be configured. If you have a T-Echo like I have here, this device also has the NRF52 microcontroller like the whiz block, and the process to flash Meshtastic is the same if you want to watch that video to learn the process. The only thing different is you just have to press this top button two times quickly to put it in the mode where it'll show up as a USB drive as shown in the video. Now flashing the other type of device, which is the ESP32 devices like the T-Beam, Helltech, and T-Deck is also easy. You generally just plug in the device to a computer, then visit flasher.meshtastic.org to get started. I'll put a link in the video description to that. There's one exception with the T-Deck. You need to push and hold the trackball while you have it turned off and then turn it on to enter in the flashing mode. I did a video specifically for the T-Deck, which I'll include in the video description. For the other ESP32 devices though, it's just a matter of hooking it up to your computer and visiting the Flasher website. One thing to note is you need to visit this website from a Chromium-based web browser. If you're already on a recent version of Windows, you should already have Microsoft Edge, which is based on Chromium, and that's what I'm using here. Now that we're at the site, go ahead and plug the device into the computer. I'm on the road, so I don't have my T-beams with me, so I'll be using my T-deck for this, but the process at this point will be the same. Then on the Select Your Device dropdown, select your device from the list, which in my case is going to be the T-deck, but if you're using a T-beam or Helltech, go and select that. Once you have your device selected, we'll go and select the firmware version. And you're generally going to want the latest stable version, which is going to be the latest beta version. So go ahead and select that. And since we're flashing a new device, select wipe and reinstall device. These devices will sometimes come with non-meshtastic firmware on them. So this clears that out and installs meshtastic. Then go ahead and click on connect. And a window will appear with your device listed. Go ahead and select that and then click on connect again. Then on this device dashboard prompt, select install. And this says T-Deck in my case because I'm using a T-Deck. Then we can confirm the installation by hitting install. And the install process will begin and it'll take a few minutes for that to go through. Once the install is complete, we can go and hit next and then close this device dashboard. After the flashing process is complete, the device should reboot and boot into the Meshtastic firmware. Then with Meshtastic booted up on the device, we're ready to connect to it from a phone over Bluetooth. So go ahead and install the Meshtastic app from your phone's app store if you haven't already. From the app, go to the settings section using the gear cog on the top right there. 
Then from that screen, there is a button with a plus sign on the bottom right that we need to select. After that, you may get a prompt for permission. We can hit allow here. And we should now see our device listed and we can tap on it to begin the pairing process. And when you do that, it's going to ask for a pin code to pair to the device using Bluetooth. The pin should be on the device's screen and we can go ahead and enter that number in here. And it'll now go through the connection process and you may get a permissions prompt for notifications and I'll select allow here. All right, we should now be connected to the device and you can tell that you're connected if you see the cloud with a check mark on it. So now that we are connected, we're ready to start configuring the device. The first thing we need to do is set the region since it's currently on unset as we can see here. So tap on unset and then we'll select our region. I'm in the US, so I'm gonna select US. And after you select that, the device will reboot and it should be set to the region that you've configured here. After the device is done rebooting, your phone should automatically connect back to the device and you'll see the cloud return to the check mark status. Next thing we'll want to do is set our device name to something more recognizable instead of the generic meshtastic default name. So to do that, select the three dot menu on the top right of the screen, then select radio configuration, then user. And here's where we'll see where we can set a long name and a short name. For the long name, I'm going to use Kev T deck but pick something you want for yours. And when you enter something in the long name, it'll set something for the short name automatically based on what you put in for the long name. If you like what it puts in, you can leave it as is, or you can change it to something of your choosing. It just has to be under four characters. So for this, I'm just going to use K T D K here. And at the bottom, you'll notice there's a switch for licensed amateur radio. You can turn this on if you're going to use your device for amateur radio purposes. Now, since using encryption on amateur radio goes against FCC regulations, this will turn off encryption if you turn this on. So we can leave this off. So now we can go ahead and select send and that'll send the settings to the device and that'll cause the device to reboot again and the phone will connect back to it after it reboots. While it's rebooting, we can hit back until we get back to the main setting screen. And once it does connect back, we should see the device has a new name configured on it. Now there's one last thing we want to check. You may remember earlier in the series when we talked about devices and I mentioned you ideally want a device that has the SX1262 radio in it. And that's because they have a better receiver in them that will get you more range. So if you have one of those devices, we want to make sure that this boosted receive function is enabled. And to do that, tap on the three dot menu on the top right again, then select radio configuration, then select LoRa. And then towards the bottom, there's an option for SX126X RX boosted gain. Make sure that switch is turned on, which in my case it already is. And then scroll down to the send button and select that to send the settings to the device. And once again, that'll make the device reboot. Then after you've done that, your device has all of the basic configuration needed to communicate. And you can run through the process on any other devices you may have. So now that we've done that, let's head back to the main settings screen we've been on. And let's take a look at the different tabs. So the first tab we have here is with the speech bubble, and that's going to be the chats. And you'll see this channel called Long Fast, which is the default channel. And if we open this up, we can go ahead and send messages to other users who are also on the default channel. Now let's go back to the previous screen and check out the next tab that has the icon with two people. And this screen shows the other devices that you're 
picking up. And here you'll see things like their short name and long name, last received GPS coordinates, the last time you picked up a signal from them, the signal strength, battery level, and if they have a sensor like we installed on the WizBlock, you also see the sensor readings. And from here, you can tap on the bubble with the short name, and we can see options to send a direct message to the device, request the device position, do a trace route, or ignore the device. All right, on the next tab is gonna be the map tab, which is where you can see other users' locations who are sharing their locations. Uh, let me scroll to a random place first. All right, so on the map here, this is where you would see other users sharing their locations. And you can also create waypoints to share by tapping and holding on the location you want to set a waypoint to. And then you can give it a name and a description. And once you've done that, you can go ahead and tap send. And the last thing to cover on the maps is there's also a number of different map types you can select as well. All right, so moving on to the next tab with the signal icon here. This is where the channel settings are and it's currently set to the default channel. So if you want to create your own private channel, you would change this name to something else and it would generate a new encryption key and a new QR code. And other users you want to communicate with will scan this QR code from the app using this scan button here. Next there are channel options and these change the lower radio configuration. It ranges from shorter range with faster communication to very long range with slow communication. The default is usually fine in most cases, but if you need longer range, you can try some of the other long range options or pick one of the shorter range options if you know you don't need the longer range and would like faster communications. So that just about covers everything you need to get started and communicate between devices in a simple setup. In the advanced series, we're gonna be covering other device roles like router, repeater, tracker and sensor and we'll go over setting up your own private encrypted channel the channel settings and primary and secondary channel options we'll be covering mqtt and using meshtastic and lennox like i mentioned earlier but that's just scratching the surface here and there'll be much more to come so i hope you join me on this next information pack series that'll do it for this video though and i hope you found it useful if you did please be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already done so and join me for the rest of this series there's only one video left and that's going to be the frequently asked questions video so be sure to tune in for that thank you all and have a good one